All right, so the last video I put out was, it would probably take quite a while to explain kind of the meaning behind the video, why I did it, um, and everything that went into it. I liked the way it turned out, but it got me thinking. I started wondering which movies were shot, like big budget Hollywood movies, things that, that just blow our minds on the screen, things that have amazingly huge budgets, and they basically have any camera they want at their disposal, which movies were used or were shot using cameras that like me and you could use, right? And I started looking into it and what I found out was enough to actually make me break out the pen and paper. I quickly realized that even looking at one single camera model, the list goes so far beyond. Like I initially started writing down like what are all the movies shot on the Canon 5D Mark II? And I started writing name after name after name. Next thing I knew, a whole page was full. And I looked and I realized that there were five separate pages. Five pages of movies shot just in the 5D Mark II. Like big budget Hollywood movies. So what I decided to do was to start small and then expand a little bit. What cameras that me and you could buy, not cinema cameras, not the Reds, not the Aries, not the Blackmagic, this, that, what everyday cameras that me and you would own will we see movies shot on? And it turns out that Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus, and Panasonic have all had cameras used for big budget, legitimate Hollywood movies. For Panasonic, they have had the GH2, the GH4, and the GH5. Now, GH5, because it's still current, some people might not be surprised. They say, oh yeah, it's a good camera. GH4 is recent enough that it still doesn't stretch the imagination. But even the GH2, the GH2 was used for big budget Hollywood movies. Olympus, the EP5 and the EP1, which was shocking to me, have both been used for Hollywood movies. With Sony, the original A7, the A7R2, the A7S, and the A7S2 have all been used for big budget Hollywood movies. Nikon D3, like I mentioned, has been used, but so is the Nikon D800, not the D850, not the D810. The D800 was used for big budget Hollywood movies, but Canon does reign supreme. The Canon 30D, the 30D was used for some French movie, stop motion. The 500D, 550D, 600D, the T2i, the T3i, the 1DC, the 1D3, the 1D4, the 1DS, the 1DX, the 5D Mark II, the 5D Mark III, and even the 7D have all been used for big budget Hollywood, big screen, professional movies. 5D2, that's the one that, that a lot of people are interested in. Obviously, any of these cameras can do it. But just with the 5D2, there were five pages of movies. Five full pages of movie credits that have been shot with the 5D Mark II. But just to name a few of the highlights, Mad Max Fury Road. Mad Max Fury Road, they did use the 5D2, but they also used the D800, Nikon D800, and they also used the Olympus EP5. The Olympus EP5, the Nikon D800, and the Canon 5D Mark II were all used to shoot Mad Max Fury Road. Think about that. The Man from UNCLE. I love that movie. There's so much good about that movie. And it turns out it was shot on the Canon 5D Mark II. The movie Noah, Elysium, Thor, The Dark World, Captain America, The First Avenger, The Bourne Legacy, 127 Hours, Black Swan, Iron Man 2, Act of Valor, Drive, Limitless, The Avengers. All of these movies were shot with the 5D Mark II. I mean, the, it's just, these are just the highlighted ones. There were five pages of movies. Now, what I'm getting at is kind of something I harp on a lot, which is that the tech in cameras has been good enough for a long time. So good, in fact, that the, the, the ultimate Hollywood, whether it's Hollywood in America 
or it's Bollywood in India, or it's any of these movie uh, production companies coming out of, out of Europe, whether it's France, or Germany, whatever, they've all used everyday cameras, regular cameras. And what's crazy is that you look at the dates of some of these movies, like when they were in production and when they came out, and then you see the camera they used and you realize that they weren't even using the latest and greatest. When Mad Max Fury Road came out, the 5D Mark II was not a current camera. It was already an outdated camera, but they used it anyway because it was good. What it comes down to is there's no excuse. That was kind of partially what my last video was about. Part of it was a personal story for me, which maybe I'll explain at a different time, like what that story was, the little story I was telling. But the overall message I was also trying to relay was that you don't need to spend so much time looking at the latest and greatest specs and gear and tech and everything else. Whatever you have is good enough. It doesn't matter if you want to take photos, make movies, uh, create art, anything. You can do it. Even uh, with UFC fighters, boxers, all of the best come from humble beginnings. Same with filmmakers, photographers, all of the best come from humble beginnings. These are big Hollywood films. I see YouTubers, people on YouTube, going into massive debt because they want to take YouTube seriously and in order to do so, they're buying these red cameras, these Ari Alexas, they're trying to shoot in 8K, they have the latest camera drone. They spend so much money just throwing money at the problem. Maybe if we spend more money, our videos will be better. We just have to spend more money. No. This is proof. This is just two pages, just the quick notes. Unfortunately, you see a lot of people trying to fix every problem with money. To make better videos, to make better content, to take better photos, to, to be more popular, to be more successful, I have to spend money. People have entire jobs based around making you think that the only way you can accomplish a certain goal is if you buy this product, buy this lens, buy this you know, fill in blank here. You see the original video footage of the, uh, of the Hindenburg going down, right? To this day, it's powerful, amazing footage. You think they were using the uh, Ari Alexa and Vinny for that footage? Or was it red? You know what? I bet it was shot in like IMAX 3D though, right? It was whatever primitive, old school, barely capable equipment they had, but it was being put in front of something important. The story is what's important. That image, the Hindenburg bursting the flames going down, that was important. That was, for lack of a better term, it was a good story. So it doesn't matter what it was shot on. It doesn't matter what features it was lacking. It's powerful. And that's how every photo, every movie, every song, everything, if it's powerful and if it's real and it's raw and it's true, you're gonna feel it. You just need to tell your story. Anyway. I gotta clean this stuff up. I'm gonna finish my coffee. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.